Welcome to Beyond the Data. I'm Dr. Phoebe Thorpe, and here with me today is Dr. Francisco Garcia, the Chief Medical Officer for Pima County in Arizona. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate the invitation. Yeah. Uh, today's session was on cervical cancer, and we heard that uh, 4,000 women each year, American women, lose their lives to cervical cancer, and it's the fourth leading cause of death worldwide. Yet, it's preventable. Your program has had made great strides in detecting cervical cancer early. Um, can you tell us what are some of the secrets of your success? Well, Phoebe, one of the things that I would tell you is that uh, community-based cervical cancer prevention is a team sport. Um, and it starts off by um, bringing together uh, local partners, mm -hmm. um, and it starts off uh, by engaging with the state health department, who has been absolutely critical in, in our success, the federally qualified health centers. Um, fundamental to this is the big CDC investment in the National Breast and Cervix uh, Cancer Early Detection Program, uh, which really has sort of created standards for us. All those are elements to what is a community-based, uh, comprehensive uh, cervical cancer prevention approach. Mm -hmm. And you have communi community health workers too? Yes, you know, at the middle of everything, uh, in the, the middle circle is um, the individual woman um, and her peer group and her community and her neighborhood and her family. And so for us, community health workers and engaging with community-based organizations that do community health work and uh, community health outreach uh, is really essential. Um, we believe that women are at the center of this um, and they, they should drive the conversation. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And you also, uh, your programs have a lot of success with vaccination rates for HPV. What, what, do you, what can you share with us from that, you've learned from there? You know, uh, vaccination has been a critical component to everything that we've done in this space gosh, since before the vaccine was licensed. Um, and one of, the, one of the needs that we heard from our uh, community of women was the desire and the need to get more knowledge about how HPV vaccination worked, about safety issues, about uh, acceptability issues, about side effects. Um, that happened at the same time that we were developing our screening efforts and strategies. And so I think it was a bit of serendipity um, honestly, um, but I think because of that, we were able to um, make sure that we had messaging about vaccination very mm -hmm. early on in the process. Mm -hmm. And so in the session today, we heard that it's a, it's a complementary, both screening and vaccination. How do those two strategies work together? You know, I, in, in the ideal sort of setting, you are screening the right women and you are vaccinating the right children. Um, for us, it's meant sort of really focusing on the younger age demographic for that vaccination uh, component because, because that way we can get away with a two dose vaccine strategy and a age appropriate screening for mm -hmm. women over the age of 21, uh, really sort of focusing and working with um, community based organizations with federally qualified health centers with providers to make sure that people are, are being screened in a way that is appropriate for their age. Okay. So uh, in your opinion, what else, what else do we need to, to conquer cervical cancer? If you think about cervical cancer prevention in this country, and if you think about cervical cancer prevention worldwide, it will be a work in progress for the near future. Um, we are constantly being challenged with um, issues of access to care, mm -hmm. with issues of insurance coverage, with issues of uh, social and cultural norms that are changing, uh, with issues of patient acceptability. And in very much in the same way that our iPhones are constantly being updated, I think we need to be updating our strategies. Um, the, the key for us has been to, to work with our partners to be aware of what the, for instance, Medicaid rules are, what the uh, private insurance coverage uh, um, requirements are, mm -hmm. to make sure that we are able to deliver um, services in a way that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, there will always be a sub-segment of uh, folks who are not benefit eligible, and at least in our case, we will need to try to figure out how to service that group of folks. That, so everybody gets what they need. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, lovely, yeah. 
Um, if somebody wanted to know more about the, how they could contribute to preventing cervical cancer, where would you tell them to go? So, you know, I, I have really boring resources that I usually um, direct people to with regards to cervical cancer prevention. Um, I actually think that the, the CDC resources are, are, mm -hmm. are really excellent, and, and I really credit the um, the uh, breast and cervical cancer early detection program as, as really um, one of the key fundamental foundational elements in, in the national strategy. Um, the other piece that I think is really excellent is the American Cancer Society, a very, very excellent source for um, cancer prevention information. Um, and for providers specifically, mm -hmm. for providers who are wrestling with some of the clinical nuances, the American Society for Colposcopy and Cervical Pathology, I believe has really, really excellent um, apps, has really excellent materials, tools that providers can use to make sure that they are using evidence-based strategies in the management of their abnormal, uh, their abnormal screening results. Mm -hmm. It's get up to date too. Like you Absolutely. said, changing strategies, everybody's got to keep up to date. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for Beyond the Data. See you next month.